All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Colin, McCollum, and this is day two of Link's Brutality. I had a pretty darn good day yesterday. I met my basic brutality match goals of didn't time out on any stages and uh, didn't get any penalties, and of course didn't DQ. So now, today, we have five more stages. These are, well, there's a little bit less crawling today, but we've got a lot of really cool props. So we've got a grenade launcher today, we've got an anti-tank missile launcher today, we've got a slack line today. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen it, check out the video from Helicon Tex of all the various people getting electrocuted on the horse fencing yesterday, crawling through it. It is a hilarious video. Uh, some people really got zapped good by that stuff. Anyway, uh, let's... I'm gonna finish loading this up and then we'll jump straight into stage number five. Let's go. The electric fencing from yesterday is out of play and now instead we have a slack line. So there is a relatively wide, it's like a two inch wide toe strap between a pair of trees and then a, a rope at the top. Uh, and you have to carry each of these 15 kilo bags across the rope uh, over the quote-unquote minefield. Uh, each time you get one over, you then have to engage uh, plates through the VTAC barricade. So they're, you're going to have to do this three times, and each time you use one of the different ports. So the first one is the horizontal port. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble with this, um, not with the rifle, but with the optic. Uh, and just my own familiarity with where exactly do I hold when I've got the rifle canted over 90 degrees. I know it reasonably well for some of my guns, but this is of course a borrowed gun. Um, I did, <laughs> I would like to say I did better on this stage than I did on the first stage yesterday, and I sort of did in that I didn't have a lot of procedural uh, foo bars. But this slack line was hard. Um, if you fall off at any point, like I believe I'm about to do right, right, oh, there we go, slipped off the rope. So I have to go back to the beginning, respawn, and do it again. So I changed up a little bit of this. This time you have the option of crossing your legs like this, or you slide your feet. Uh, later on in, in, the, in our squad, at least, I saw some people realize that you could take the bag and hold it out over the rope and actually uh, put both hands on the balance rope. Uh, I did all three of them using one hand and holding the bag at my side. You can see there I was sliding my feet uh, and shuffling a bit more. Without the bag, with both hands on the rope, I could go, go across it a bit faster. The second run through here is going to be the diagonal uh, shooting port. So again, I still had a few issues um, with the shooting. I think mostly, well, obviously it was just me, but went decently well and uh, back across I have to get the third bag over. Again this slack line is both physically harder and uh, more difficult than I think a lot of people expected. We had a bunch of people time out on this one. So it's slow. It's slow going if you don't want to fall off unless you're really good at it. And Some people were really good and could just scamper right across. I normally would like to think my balance is pretty good uh, but that was a that was a very challenging obstacle. And then the uh, <laughs> this vertical shooting port is definitely the easiest one. I had to reload here, and I actually had a lot of trouble getting the magazine out of the cummerbund. My cover shirt was getting in the way. I had to actually put the gun down, yank the magazine out with both hands. That those, those cummerbund mag pouches are absolutely slower than proper pouches, and. Ended up timing out here. So I get eight 15 second penalties for targets not engaged, so I missed three of the rifle plates and then there were five pistol plates that you had to engage at the very end. So not great there, uh, but we did have, like, we had enough people time out that I was still only 69th out of 115. Uh, this was another really cool, nice physical stage. Uh, that was, uh, spoiler alert, virtually impossible. I believe three people in the entire match actually completed this stage. So what you have to do, there are two steel targets. They're the same ones that we had yesterday for the Custardy drill. And you have to hit each of them twice. So target one, target two, target one, target two. You're not allowed to double tap them. 
from three different positions. One is through the window, one is over the back of the car, and one is over the front of the car. The, the targets are frankly not that hard. We're talking 100 yards, maybe 75 yards, something uh, in that range. But it was a lot of engagements. It was uh, from some unsupported, sort of unsupported positions. And, uh, and as the stage goes on, you're going to get more and more tired. Because what happens here is after you've made your four hits from each position, you have to push the car back to the other side of the bay. It's not very far. Uh, frankly, once you get the car moving, it tends to roll pretty well, but you have to exert some energy to get the thing moving. So from this second position, I'm going to repeat all of the same rifle shots. So it is a total of 12 rifle hits from each position, and you have to do this a total of four times. So you're pushing the car three times and shooting four times, which means this is a fairly heavy round count stage for a brutality style match. And there is a bonus here coming up because in the back of this car is a compressed air, roughly 30 millimeter grenade launcher. Uh, go ahead and have to reload. Uh, you get one shot with the grenade launcher on a, uh, a plywood cutout of a tank. And this was really, really cool. So I actually, I sort of cheated. Uh, the day before yesterday, I went up to the gun expo area and tried out a shot with a grenade launcher. So I knew about the trigger, which is very heavy. I understood how to use it. Should be a piece of cake. The trick here is that the grenades are rifled. They have a driving band. And then on the practice grenades that we're using, it's a rubber uh, driving band. And I put it into the grenade, the launcher too hard. I got the rifling jammed not in line with the actual rifling, and I missed by like 10 oh, yards to the right the because the Where's rifling the on the thing wasn't engaged. That was a real bomb. I was I was disappointed by that. So push the car back. This will be the third shooting engagement here. This was like this was a good stage. It was I think it's interesting to have stages in matches that are sort of a Kobayashi Maru where it's not impossible to finish, so I guess not quite Kobayashi Maru, but a stage that is essentially too hard for almost anyone in the match to finish. Um, the nice thing here is because there were enough, there were a lot of target engagements, we had a nice uh, sort of staggered plateaus of, of shooters who parred out. It wasn't like once you par out, everyone's score is the same. Um, there's a 15 second penalty for every target that you don't get. Um, and that still gave some, some variation. So I had 21 15 second penalties here. Uh, okay. I think this was about okay. my worst stage of the match, 78 was... overall. Uh, largely because I missed that grenade launcher shot. That would have been a bonus 60 seconds that I got it, which would have bumped me up nicely. All right, steel overload. Let's see if I can get some redemption here. This starts, as you can see there, uh, with okay, a door breaching, uh, uh, sort of a simplistic replication of door breaching you just hammer open the door there's actually not much holding it shut and then there are a lot of steel targets here so there are two texas stars um, i should say the first thing you have to do is put 10 rounds into a paper target this was a running theme uh, at this match and it's an interesting one it's not one that i've seen done at a brutality match before where you have a high volume of fire of, of uh, a rifle onto paper so slight misunderstanding there, uh, went to drop the rifle halfway through the, that sequence before I realized, hey, no, no, 10 rounds, not five or whatever. So then you move on to the pistol. There are two Texas stars here with a couple of no-shoot plates on them, and you have to clear both of the stars, but don't hit the no-shoots. If you drop any of those white plates, uh, that is a 60 second penalty. So. Um, 60 second penalties are a staple of brutality matches, and they really emphasize don't screw up like I have in fact screwed up, and I believe I've already hit one of them. There. Then uh, reload with another 10 round magazine. Uh, you'll notice I had the rifle simply slung uh, while I did the pistol shooting. That is because magazines on this stage had to be loaded to only and exactly 10 rounds. So after you fire your 10 rounds, the magazine is empty. The uh, 180 degree safety rule no longer applies since you can just drop it on a sling. And then you have to engage two Polish plate racks there, again with a couple of no-shoots. Um, this was challenging pistol shooting. And uh, I did 
okay. I wasn't, honestly, wasn't really happy with this. My goal for brutality matches is always to survive without timing out and without getting any penalties. And by this point, I had timed out on a stage, I had gotten penalties on one of the stages today, I imminently dropping uh, a no-shoot plate here as well. Like, eh, it was not my, not my best uh, day of shooting. I was a little disappointed at this point. So, almost. Reload one more time, get the last couple of plates, or the last single plate. There it is. And one more. One more. I feel like I did better with the RX Delta last year. Uh, my head just kind of wasn't in my pistol shooting this year. So uh, back to the rifle for another one last 10 round magazine. There were again some people who dumped their shots onto this rifle target too fast. And got some either penalties or missed shots. And you don't get feedback on that until after the stage is all done, which makes it uh, a fairly challenging, well, it's not necessarily challenging, but you have to know your shots uh, and be confident in where you're making hits. Everything has gone completely crap today. That was really bad. I hit a hostage and I screwed up the procedure again as well. All right, maybe I can get some redemption here. This is another physically challenging stage. This is another really kind of classic brutality stage. There are three components of an anti-tank missile launcher sitting on the back of that Suzuki Samurai, not quite a Jeep. And what I have to do is bring them all over to this tire position, set up the missile launcher, uh, and then take everything back to the Jeep. So what you do first is run from the Jeep over to the tires, uh, get hits on paper there, and then run back, grab the first part of the launcher, the tripod, uh, and set it up. There we go, and then back to the rifle for another sequence of hits. The Perun, by the way, I realized I haven't really talked about the Perun through this series of videos because it just worked. Um, it never did anything that I had to pay attention to. Um, I guess the very first stage of the first day it didn't work when I didn't put ammo in it, but I can't really blame the rifle for that. Uh, it worked completely flawlessly without a single malfunction of any kind during the match. Really, really quite happy with it. And I mean, good for the rifle there. It tells you there's there's not a whole lot I have to explain about the rifle. So last, the, the first part was the tripod. The second was the little mounting bracket. Third is the launcher itself. We're gonna take one last series of rifle shots on paper. And then I have to pay, take the whole ensemble back to the vehicle. So some people grabbed it all set up. I opted to sling the launcher and then grab the tube and the bracket together. This stuff is a little heavier than it looks. You get fairly winded by the end of a stage like this. Drop it all in the back of the vehicle, draw your pistol, and end the stage by making a couple hits on this rather challenging, or sorry, one hit on this rather challenging little plate, which I'm very happy to say that I actually made on my first shot. So that was cool. Uh, fourth place open, 13th place overall. I, I'm back, baby. A uh, little bit of redemption here for my previous couple of rather disappointing redemption. stages. Yeah, very happy with this one. And that brings us to our 10th and final stage, Flashbanger. This uses an airsoft flashbang grenade. It's not quite a training flashbang. Are you ready? I do the totally rookie boot camp private thing here, and I toss the flashbang into the door, and it kind of falls outside of the tent instead of going in where it's supposed to, but... Oops. So now we have two paper targets, and each time you go through here, you have to put four shots on each target through the plastic windows, which don't seem like that big of a deal, but they actually, they flap back and forth. The, the little white, uh, you know, fake lines in there do obscure the targets. This was, again, a lot harder than I think a lot of people realized, and each of the targets has a no-shoot directly under it. So. After I engage with both hands, I have to run the, the ammo cans around that pole at the back of the bay, come back and engage it one-handed, and then I repeat that and engage it one-handed with the other hand. You can use both hands to reload or fix malfunctions. I proactively reloaded there. 
I decided to shoot it uh, right-handed first, which is weak hand for me, figuring when I've done another run I will be even more tired and um, I'd rather get the hard one out of the way while, I have, while I'm in the best condition. So I do the second one, left hand only, and then uh, run the ammo cans around one more time. And then you get to, after this run, you get to drop them and engage freestyle with both hands. Now, you do have to have the rifle with you during the stage, but you don't actually use it. So this one uh, did not go so well. Once again, a lot of people got penalties on this stage, myself included. Um, it was more difficult than expected in retrospect. Yeah, three, uh, two no shoots uh, and a, a missed shot. Yeah, I should have should have been a lot more careful on that. One. But live and learn. That, that's a you know, good lesson for next time. Okay, so the last stage did not go so great. You do not want me on the hostage rescue squad. Um, certain maybe nationalities excluded. Oops, it's kind of kind of a bummer way to end the match, but. This was overall a fantastic, amazing match. Giga and the Polinar crew put together an awesome set of stages. They were both more interesting and harder than last year, which is saying something because last year's stages were both really hard and really cool and interesting. So congratulations to Polinar for Link's Brutality 2023 being an awesome success. I, there's still people shooting here. I haven't finished, well, the whole match hasn't finished yet. I'm done with my stages, but I don't know yet how I did overall in the match. Hopefully I'll be like above the 50th percentile. I'm certainly not gonna be anywhere in the top couple because a bunch of, bunch of uh, timeouts and also penalties. So um, the guns that I use, the RX Delta, worked fine. My trigger control today on that pistol just completely went out the window. I don't know exactly what it was, but my head was not really in the game today. I had a great first day, not such a great second day. Uh, the Perun X16 ran flawlessly. So I was using it, and Jordan, who you see from time to time, who runs the camera most of the time, he was also running this match with the Perun X16. We just swapped it back and forth. It also ran literally flawlessly the entire two days for the match. So in the rocks, in the dust, not so much mud here this year, but um, it's comfortable to shoot, recoils nice and light. It was a really fun gun to shoot the match with. The best. I think the best overall thing I can say about it is you never really noticed the rifle. It just did its job of being there and putting bullets where you wanted them to go. And you never had to pay attention to it, which is what you want for a rifle. So uh, a big thanks to Polinar for loaning me the pistol and to Tink Arms here in Slovenia for loaning me the new rifle. Uh, Perun X16s are available in the US, right now they're being distributed by AEA Arms. So if you're interested in them, out. And of course, I have a video here from last year where I did a whole disassembly, teardown, and everything on an X16. I actually have one at home in, in, three, bleh, in 300 blackout that we'll be doing some filming with. Well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, Lynx Brutality this year. If you are in Europe, uh, definitely keep it in mind for next year. It's a great competition, tons of fun, great people, great camaraderie. And, well, what more can you say about it than that? Thanks for watching.